Hello again, my name is Biras Sazaf and I work for International Agricultural Training Center affiliated with the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry in Turkey. In the second part of my presentation, we will discuss the nitrogen and phosphorus cycles, two of the four basic ecosystem cycles. Of course, by changing mentality, how can we eliminate the negative contributions of human actions to these cycles will be on the agenda of the presentation. In this presentation, we will consider nitrogen, phosphorus cycles, human intervention, and the possible measures can be taken as a consequence of changing mindset. The nitrogen cycle is the flow of nitrogen in and between the atmosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, and just. The nitrogen cycle is important because nitrogen is a necessary nutrient for life on Earth. Nitrogen is an essential component of amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, and nucleic acids, the building blocks of genetic material. When other resources like light and water are plentiful, ecosystem production and biomass are frequently limited by the amount of accessible nitrogen. Burning fossil fuels, using nitrogen-based fertilizers, and engaging in other activities can significantly increase the quantity of biologically accessible nitrogen in an ecosystem. And because nitrogen availability frequently affects primary productivity in many ecosystems, major changes in nitrogen availability can cause significant changes in the nitrogen cycle in both aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. Since the early stages of so-called modern agriculture, industrial nitrogen fixation has grown at an exponential rate and human activity has doubled global nitrogen fixation. Regarding nitrogen cycle, by changing mindset at community level, we can demand a fair taxation on synthetic nitrogen fixed by Haber-Bosch process using vast amount of fossil fuel, and we can encourage greater use of renewable energy in this process. However, some of the solutions are related to farmers. With precision farming practices, they can use variable rate fertilizer exactly as needed or turn to biological based fertilizers. Finally, I would like to talk about the phosphorus cycle and the anthropogenic impact. The phosphorus cycle describes how phosphorus flows through the lithosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere. Phosphorus is required for plant and animal growth as well as health of bacteria in the soil. But it's steadily reduced over time. Phosphorus' primary biological purpose is to produce nucleotides, which are the building blocks of DNA and RNA. The phosphorus cycle is a very slow process in which various environmental conditions help to wash phosphorus from rocks into the soil. Organic matter in the soil absorbs phosphorus and use it for a variety of biological processes. Humus have had a substantial impact on the phosphorus cycle through a range of activities, including fertilizer use, food distribution, and deliberate eutrophication. Phosphorus-containing fertilizers increase phosphorus levels in the soil and are especially harmful when discharged into the local aquatic environments. Natural eutrophication occurs when phosphorus is supplied to water at a pace that is typical of natural processes. A natural supply of phosphorus over time delivers nutrients to the water, increasing the productivity of that environment. While foods are delivered from fields to cities, significant amounts of phosphorus are drained into water systems a process known as artificial or anthropogenic eutrophication. When phosphorus levels are too high, an oversupply of plant nutrients promotes excessive algae development in water. However, these algae perish or form toxic algae blooms that harm the ecosystem's plants and animals. 
when excess phosphorus is leached into the water as a result of human activities, it harms aquatic ecosystems. Changing our mentality and having a more sustainable mindset can lead us to take some positive actions regarding the phosphorus cycle. Increased organic matter in agricultural soils reduce runoff and gives phosphate to plants. Homeowners can prevent phosphorus pollution by choosing phosphorus-free loud fertilizers and detergents. Human and animal waste contain phosphorus as well, which is not properly processed and dumped into the bodies of water, raising also the phosphorus level. The municipality's faulty water treatment also causes excess phosphorus to remain in the water, which enters our bodies when we drink it, and it is detrimental to us. Thus, in order to maintain the ecological equilibrium, we must exercise extreme caution while using phosphorus artificially. Excessive amount of fertilizer, more than necessary, Increase in phosphate in aquatic systems can have harmful effects on aquatic life. Therefore, variable rate fertilizer use at farmer level can also reduce the negative impacts. With these two short video lectures, we touch upon the four elements and ecosystem cycles, human intervention in these cycles, and how these interventions are related to the change at individual and community level. In fact, in a way, we have summarized why we developed the SysMind project. To get more information about the SysMind findings and outcomes, please visit the project's website, which domain name is written on the screen. Please do not hesitate to ask any question by email as well. Thank you for listening carefully. Let's sum it up. Humans have felt the need to observe and explain important elements in the world and their dynamic movements throughout history. The negative intervention of artificial anthropogenic effects in the natural ecosystem cycles of the Earth disrupts the natural balance in the world. And the prerequisite for changing our behavior is to internalize what we have learned, change our mentality and turn it into action. This is the main function of the Sysman project.